in the spirit of user inputs, we've talked about sliders and these text fields already, but sometimes you just need to have a drop down menu with a handful of different options. Uh, and well, that's also fairly easy to facilitate because Unreal has this thing called combo boxes. We have a key variant and a string variant. For the most part, uh, the key variant is a little bit more of a hassle to set up, but slightly more customizable. And in the end, also technically slightly more performant. And then we have the string variant, which is a little bit more straightforward to set up, uh, but it uses strings and people hate strings. So it's a little uh, more good for like quick prototyping in a lot of cases. So what do we have here, right? We have our default options for the string combo box. So let's just give it a couple of options. Let's imagine that these are graphic presets or something like that. So we can say we have a low option, we have a medium option, we have a high option, and we have a ultra option. If we just go into the game now, we can just see that there's already like something wrong with the key based one. We'll get into that in a moment. Uh, but we just have our low, medium, high, and ultra drop down menu, and we can just pick them, and that is that, right? The visuals for them are a little uh, bad by default. You can give them uh, sounds and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we have this combo button style, so shadow and color opacity. What I want is the item style. I want the text color to be white. Because I don't know who thought that gray on black <laughs> or black on gray was a good idea, but this is a little bit more readable, right? So that's uh, pretty straightforward. And how do we use that information? Well, if we go into the event graph, we get our combo string. We have on opening, so this is whenever you open your selection box. If you want to do something with that code, uh, you can. Generally speaking, I don't really see a lot of things that you would do when you open a combo box, uh, but it is an event that you can use. And we also have on selection changed. This is when you change your selection to something new. This has a selection type enum, so we can check whether that was based on a key press or based on navigation when we click a mouse or when we set it directly through code. This one is slightly more relevant than the last video that we did on the text inputs, because in this case, this will also change when you like navigate with a controller over it. And in some cases, you might want that to immediately update to reflect like maybe a different post processing effect or something like that. But maybe if you do like your entire engine scalability, uh, that takes a moment to update. You don't want that to instantly update anytime you scroll over all of your options you really want that to be like properly committed to before you do anything so these might be a little bit more relevant to use in combo boxes now the more important thing is that we get the string of the selected item so what you probably do is you add a switch on string and then just switch on these different cases and then in the details panel for it you can actually set the strings that correspond to it now do make sure that these are actually like 100% the same. So the best thing to do is just to come in here and copy these over and paste them uh, back into there so that you are entirely sure that you uh, didn't do any typos, you didn't do any misspellings between the two of them. They are the exact same thing because with strings, it is quite important that everything matches up. Otherwise, it's going to uh, go through to its default output pin that we have here, which is also good to set up something for uh, just to catch whenever you mess up any of these names. Uh, but let's just copy all of these over so that we're entirely sure that whatever happens, it's always going to be one of these. And then you could like set engine scalability relative to maximum, uh, which is a pre existing function. And this is the lower the number, the higher your scalability. So for ultra, that would be. Uh, one and then high would be two this would be three and then we have four as well and now we have a combo box that can set our engine scalability so if we do this and we set this to low we can see it instantly changes the graphics to look uh, quite a lot worse actually so let's set it back to this and we can see that it does those in slight steps like this so we have a combo box that sets our engine scalability now fantastic so that's what string combo boxes do now there is an argument to be made that strings are slow to compare so a switch on string is a pretty slow operation 
my response to that also would be that because this is like a user UI thing that you're going to put in like your settings menu or whatever, it's only going to do this once. It's not going to do this like a hundred times across several different instances, every frame or whatever. So the string compare being a little bit slow here probably doesn't actually matter that much. However, we're still going to take a look at the other option here, because that one uses names, which is technically more performant, but more importantly, it has a bit more customizability uh, to it as well. So what we have here, if we scroll all the way down, we get a on generate widget. We can create a binding and that will uh, take in our item. So that's going to be the name of whatever we put in. And we can return a widget. So instead of just having the like default string on a background that we have here, we can actually make these display custom widgets instead. So uh, in my case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a super quick little uh, widget, user interface, widget blueprint, WBP. Um, we'll call this choice widget. And all that I'm really going to do for this is I'm going to give this a uh, border. And in that border, I'm going to put in a text. And that's really all there is to it for this. So uh, the text I'm going to make white and the border I'm going to give a default color of like green, something like that. Set this to desired so that we can actually see uh, what's going on a little bit better. And then I'm going to make both this color and the text itself, obviously, uh, be variable. So make sure that both of these components themselves are set to being variable. And then on event preconstruct, I drag both of these in and I set text for my text on preconstruct. And then I set color, uh, set brush color that we want. And I promote both of these simply to variables. So we promote this to a variable. We promote this to a variable, set both of those to be instance editable, and also exposing them on spawn. So that way, if we go back to the WBP HUD on generate widgets, uh, we can just create a widget. That'll be our WBP uh, choice widget. Takes in the text for uh, the item. And then in this case, we can do whatever you want with the brush color. You can, of course, do something like a switch on string here as well and make different widgets based on your like string inputs. So that way we... Well, actually, let's just do that. Can I just copy over this switch on string? Hopefully we can. You can. Fantastic. Uh, so that way, what we do uh, is we return different widgets based on the input string, right? So on low, we return this with a like light blue color because it's not that intense uh, we always return the like input text but on medium that might be like a slightly more green color and then on high that might be like a more orange kind of color and then ultra is going to be like super like saturated red or something like that and then based on whatever uh input string we give in it's going to have the different colors as well so you can see, even with this string uh, box, we still have quite a bit of flexibility to code up our own customized setup. So we'll be able to see that if we uh, now look at this, we have these different colors for all these different backgrounds. And I'm using the same widget now with just different input parameters, but you can make these entirely separate widgets, obviously. So it is quite customizable as it is, uh, but now let's go over to the key box because that is a slightly different story we still have this on generate content widget which i can actually just uh, create the same binding for it technically gives you in a name instead of a string which again is more performant so uh, we would have to switch on name instead so we name those low medium i'm just going to say low mad high ultra all that same stuff uh, and we kind of just like copy all of these over because it's going to be pretty much the same deal. Uh, but instead, we need to convert the name to a text instead. And that's pretty much as easy as it is. The only difference there being that this is, again, technically more performant, but not in a way that's actually going to matter. So I wouldn't like to lose any sleep over it personally. Um, let's return all of these values as well. 
Uh, so this is the exact same thing. So why is this better? Why is this more customizable? Why does this, uh, like, why would I use this over this string one if the performance difference doesn't really matter? Well, the thing is, you saw that there was a second thing that we uh, could generate a binding for on this one, didn't you? We also have generate item widgets. And this, we can use the same binding for, for now is going to generate the widget that displays inside of here once we've picked something. That is a thing that the combo box for string just simply uh, doesn't let you do. As you can see, if I pick medium, it just picks the same uh, medium one, or ultra, or low, or whatever. I didn't actually give this one any options. Hold on. Let's go back into the options. <laughs> uh, call this low, medium, high, and ultra. And this initially seems like it works the exact same way. But what if I just want this to be non-colored or always want that to be like a black background or whatever? So what we can do there instead is we can create a, a new binding. And I'll just use one of these create widget things because I don't really like care about making a new specific widget for this. And I'm going to say this one always just has a black background. So I don't want any fancy colors once I have it selected. And now you'll see, unlike this one, which always will just show you the corresponding color from the drop-down menu, when I choose this one, it I set it up the wrong way around, but it now shows everything as being uh, black, and only when I pick it does it uh, show you the color. I just mixed up the two different um, functions here. So what you'd actually want to do is go back into the designer and uh, swap these functions around, obviously. So we have on generate widget contents will be on generate item widgets and the other way around. <laughs> I mixed up uh, which one does what. So now this one will always be black and these ones will always be colored. So you can set up different widgets for choosing and having made a choice, which is potentially just kind of nice, especially used with a combo button style where the combo button itself is kind of just like invisible. Uh, so we can say the button style here. So if we set these uh, normal hovered and pressed styles just to have a tint with a alpha of zero, uh, you'll see that we still have the little uh, arrow drop down next to it, which you can also uh, set that up to like not show, obviously, if you don't want that. Uh, but that way it starts looking like not programmer art at some point. Obviously, the widget that I made still looks like programmer art because it's very ugly. Uh, but we don't have like this outline anymore and it starts looking a little bit more like exactly what you want it to look like. So that's combo boxes for you. For the most part, the string boxes probably will do all that you need them to do. Uh, but if you do want that little bit more visual customizability, the key boxes are really quite cool to work with as well. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And a huge thank you to my Cave Big Brain tier supporters, which care more for coding than impulse control, Earl Monsville Erno, my Cave Students tier supporters, Oiku, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Mauricio Perias.